The National Agricultural College story. The National Agricultural College was founded in 1896 by Dr. Krauskopf. Since that time, it has become a senior college accredited to grant a Bachelor of Science degree in any one of the seven major fields of agriculture. The college's graduates have gained a great deal of success in the field. At the, at the present time, the college has a student body of 240. 40 male students, the objective being to increase to 300 students in the near future. There are the facilities present at the present time to take care of 300 male students. There is a permanent faculty of 25 faculty members. That means that there are approximately 10 students to each faculty member. You can see that individual attention is given to the students when they need it. Now, in order to maintain these excellent educational facilities, it's necessary to re receive donations from private individuals, such as this one from Edwin B. Elson. Another interesting feature of the college is the fact that the president, Mr. James Work, is a dollar-a-year man, receiving no pay for his excellent supervision of the institution. Here we see a classroom scene which is typical in the college. The college's objective is to teach, train the student both from the academic as well as a practical approach. The student gets a great deal of classroom work as well as practical work with our excellent facilities at the college. Here we see part of the 1,200 acres. The college has that amount of acreage in this beautiful Bucks County area. About 750 of these acres are under tillage. The rest is in woodlot and pasture. Now here we see one of the students and his instructor using some of our farm machinery. We maintain pieces of farm machinery from our, all the large farm machinery companies. The reason for that being to give the student experience in using every type of brand on the market so that when he goes out into the field, he'll be able to use any type of farm machinery that is available to him. In, in explaining our freshman program in the summer, we maintain a nine-week period during which the freshman gets experience in each one of our seven fields of agriculture, as well as one full week with our farm machinery, such as this baler here, which is being used by one of our students as well as an instructor who is supervising them. Now, the freshman class during that freshman summer is split up into nine groups, approximately 10 students in a group. Each one of those groups of 10 students works for one week in each one of our seven departments, supervised by the head of the department and the head of the department's assistants. He gains a great deal of practical work and gets to know a little bit about all of the seven fields we teach, as well as mastering certain skills in each one of them. The, the eighth week he works with all our farm machinery, and the ninth week he picks the field that he thinks he's most interested in and works in that area another week. That means that he has six weeks vacation remaining to him, and in the middle of September he comes back and majors in the field of his choice. Now here we see some of the swine in our animal husbandry department. We maintain sheep, swine, and beef cattle, and all the other animals that are necessary to educate a student who is majoring in the field of animal husbandry. Here we see some of our beautiful orchards that are a part of our horticulture department. 
The student on this piece of farm machinery doing some weeding in our orchard is the present president of a student body. You can see that he's operating the machine as close as possible to the trees and doing an excellent job at it. Now here we see another student working through some of our younger trees in the orchard. The dust kicking up now, of course, is due to a summer with comparatively little rainfall. And of course, when you have a summer like that, irrigation is absolutely necessary. And irrigation is one of the courses taught at the college. Here we see some of the peaches in the, in the peach orchard section of the Hort Department. Now this gives you an excellent idea of the way our instructors supervise the practical work of our students. The instructor is Mr. Feldstein, who is showing a student how to use that farm machinery, piece of farm machinery. Of course, the piece of farm machinery that he's working is a, called a cultivator. You can see the instructor talking to the student as he works along, giving him personal supervision, teaching him all the tricks of handling that piece of farm machinery. I can't think of any other agricultural college in the country that gives such direct supervision to the students. Now here we see part of our greenhouses. Incidentally, we have 16,000 square foot under glass in this particular department. And remember, the students get to work in that area and gets a lot of practical experience working under that glass. The men we see working to our immediate front are John Juisty and Al Rullis, who are instructors in the ornamental hort department. Here we see some beautiful red geraniums that were raised in these greenhouses. The unusual looking piece of farm machinery to our front is called a sprayer. It sprays insecticides on the orchards to keep the insects down. Incidentally, this piece of farm machinery is being run by one of our students in his practical education at the college. This football trophy is a James Work trophy given to the outstanding member of the National Agricultural College team annually. A small replica of it is given to the boy to keep in his own possession. The large trophy is kept in the trophy case with the other athletic as well as stock trophies. You can see that the teams representing the college have won quite a few since its existence. The college is a non-sectarian institution as depicted by the three windows which show the Protestant, the Jewish, and the Catholic faith. The college has no fraternities, only professional clubs, and is run on strictly a non-sectarian basis. Here we see some of the students doing research work in the library as well as doing some studying. Agriculture is a highly scientific field. In order for a person to make it, have any success in that area, he has to have a good scientific background. The professors who are the head of the various departments require their students to go into the library and do research work and keep up with the advancements in the field, to read all the periodicals that come out, to do papers on those articles and to look up the information that's necessary. Here we see some of our students working as committees. 
One of the objectives of the college and of any college should be to make to train students to get along with one another because after all success in future years depends a great deal on how one gets along with one's fellow man. Here we see the students studying some problem and expressing their viewpoints to one another on that particular idea. Here we see part of our prize beef herd. There are white Herefords, white-faced Herefords, and black Angus. The man driving them out to pasture is Mr. Harry Hopkins, who's an outstanding man in that field. This is a prized black Angus bull owned by the college. It has won quite a few blue ribbons at the state fairs. You can see Harry Hopkins in the background must have a great deal of confidence in his ability to handle animals as he was in the pen with them. Here we see some of our sheep being driven out into the pen. They seem to be very well trained as they're taking instructions from the cameraman and they're walking right toward him. Here's a Harry Hopkins holding one of the prize specimens and showing it to you. One of the most important subjects at the college and as far as the dairy and the animal husbandry majors are concerned is judging and showing of animals. And here Mr. Hopkins is showing you the proper way to show an animal. This is a view of the barns where we keep the stock in our animal husbandry department. Now here we are at the horses stables where the prize percherons belonging to the college are maintained. Harry K. Hopkins is now leading out one of the outstanding percheron horses in the country. This particular animal has won many blue ribbons at the state and county fairs. You'll note that Harry knows how to handle this animal as he's standing in front of it. And he has it perking its ears up and showing itself off to best advantage. A little jerk of the rein and the horse lowers or raises its head at the will of the shower. Here we see two of the other prize percherons being led out. This is the way they're shown in a show ring at a state or a county fair. You'll notice the person leading them around has to prance as well as the horses. You notice their ears are perking up, which is a sign of an excellently, of a well-bred horse. We are now in the laboratory of the chemistry department where Dr. Elson is lecturing on an experiment that the students are about to perform. You'll note that all the modern methods of teaching are being used. The professor is instructing, the professor is using a practical piece of equipment to demonstrate from and the experiments being carried on before the eyes of the students who are closely aligned around the experiment. Here the professor is walking to, up to the students who are at their benches carrying on the experiment. Students can get individual instruction any time they find it necessary by just raising their hand and the professor will be ready and willing to go over them and give them any help that they might need. Student has just raised his hand and the professor is going over there to talk to him. The chemistry lab is a very important phase of the college life of the student. This is a view of the experimental laboratory. You'll note that it was an old farmhouse that was a, built around 1700 and was converted by the college authorities into a modern experimental laboratory. The shrubbery around the laboratory is maintained by the ornamental horticulture department at the college. 
This is the inside of the laboratory, and you'll note that you have all the modern experimental facilities there that are necessary to carry on the sort of work that Dr. Schatz, the head of the department, is commissioned to experiment in. Dr. Schatz has an excellent background in the field of research. He has his PhD degree in microbiology and was one of the men instrumental in the discovery of streptomycin. He worked in that experiment at Rutgers University under Dr. Felix Waxman, who got the Nobel Prize for his discovery of streptomycin. Here you see Dr. Schatz looking at a slide with several of his assistants. The young man behind Dr. Schatz is a student at the college. The other gentleman in this picture is Dr. Mohan, who is another, has another man with a PhD in microbiology and who is Dr. Schatz's able assistant. The laboratory receives many grants from agricultural industry to carry on experiments. The laboratory is on the verge of making many important discoveries in the very near future. This is the poultry diagnostic lab which was set up by the state of Pennsylvania. It is headed by Dr. Sinha, who is a graduate veterinarian. The objective of the laboratory is to handle service work for the poultry farmers in the area. If the college makes a success of this particular enterprise, which it seems to be doing, there is no doubt but that the state of Pennsylvania will give additional grants for additional experimental stations in the fields of animal husbandry and dairy husbandry and possibly horticulture. Dr. Sinha is showing a student how to look through one of the slides in one of the microscopes in his laboratory. This is excellent training for any student who's majoring in the field of poultry husbandry. Here we see a chicken that is about to be dissected for the benefit of the poultry industry. You'll note that Dr. Sinha is performing the experiment in front of several assistant students who are helping him, as well as a class in poultry husbandry behind the glass window to our right. With these excellent facilities at the college, the student can see how an experimental station should be carried on. The students be, seem to be taking a great interest in the proceedings and are gaining a great deal of advantage to this food industry demonstration that's being carried on by Dr. Turner. This is the dairy department, the barns where the prize herd of Holstein cows are housed. The college maintains a herd of about 120 head, and they milk between 50 and 70 per day. Every one of these animals comes from a prize sire. Here are a few jerseys that are used for educational purposes as well as to increase the butterfat content in the college's milk production. This gives an excellent idea of some of the extracurricular activities that are carried on by the college. The football team is running through a path cleared by the band. Here we see that the college maintains a football team as well as a college band. The college participates on an intercollegiate level with other colleges in three varsity sports, football, basketball, and baseball. Every college that we participate with has a student body of approximately five times as many as a National Agricultural College. In spite of this, the National Agricultural College's excellent football team ended this past season with a 5-2-1 record. They won five games, they lost two, and they tied one. This particular picture shows the National Agricultural College's last game of the season with New Britain State Teachers College of Connecticut. 
this team that they are playing finish the season undefeated and untied. The very fact that the college can maintain three varsity teams, as well as a band and a glee club and professional clubs in each one of the major fields, shows that the 240 students have excellent college spirit. This is the only agricultural college in the country that is, teaches only agriculture. There are no scholarships, athletic, academic, or agricultural given at the college. Yet, the college can maintain these three varsity sports and do exceptionally well in all of them. We fittingly conclude this film study of the National Agricultural College with a view of the study of its founder, Dr. Joseph Krauskopf. He would indeed be proud of the growth of the institution from a secondary school in 1896 to a senior degree granting college in 1948. He would be doubly proud of the fact that the senior college status was attained primarily through the vision of its present president and former student of Dr. Krauskopf, Mr. James Wirth.